travel vlogs can be lots of fun to watch or they can be kind of boring. The trick to making them fun is to regularly switch up the type of shots you're offering your viewer as you tell your story. Today, I'm going to show you six very different and very cool types of shots you can add to your travel vlogs for some exciting visual variety. Hi friends and welcome back to AMA TV where I create travel videos and provide video production instruction so you can level up your travel vlogging skills. Now the first main shot that works great in any vlog is the establishing shot. This is usually at the beginning of a video or after a change in location. Its purpose is to generally just establish a sense of place, although it could also establish the mood, the weather, or similar overarching details. Establishing shots are often created using a drone to really give you a bird's eye view of an area like Sedona or Colorado, very different places. Another of my favorite establishing shots is the classic road footage. It's easy to capture as long as you're not driving and it can really generate excitement as you arrive at a place. You can also grab exteriors of buildings, shots of signs, entryways, or even written materials like tickets to really show exactly where you are and what you're doing. While the establishing shot is a filmmaking classic, this classic vlogging shot you see right here is very much not. However, it is the cornerstone of what makes a modern day vlog, especially for YouTube. This type of shot should be balanced out with the other shots and mostly used to tell your story. Maybe you would talk about where you are, what you're doing, how you feel, and what you really want your viewers to know. If you'd like to see the current vlogging setup, that I use for these shots that is quite awesome and affordable for new vloggers, check out the video linked in the description. I walk you through the camera, the vlogging mic, and the hand grip that is working out best for me. This is filming outdoors in Pensacola. There's like military aircraft flying overhead. It's probably my husband. The posed candid is definitely one of my favorites for travel vlogging. It's maybe just you and your friends just kind of doing your thing while cameras are rolling. Of course, it would be great to have a videographer follow you around to get these shots for you, but most of the time you'll have to find another way. So one great way is to simply set up a tripod and let the camera roll. But in case you're not toting an actual tripod, you can also use a Gorilla Grip like this to attach to a variety of places. I'm also a big fan of this clamp grip as it gives you some additional options for attaching to things. It is super strong and sturdy. Now, time lapses can be used to create the posed candid or for the establishing shot. Some of the newer Canon cameras have built-in time lapse mode, which is super simple to use, and GoPro cameras classically have this as well. Otherwise, on Sony cameras, I believe you have to set up what is called interval shooting. You can shoot a time lapse of road footage for even more effective movement, or when used with the posed candid style, it will really show a lot of action and even progress in doing something. Setting something up is kind of a classic way to use this shot. Perhaps the most popular thing of all time to time lapse is the the movement of weather because nature is such a beautiful thing and it is so subtle until you suddenly see it fast. Another shot that I think is super fun to use in travel vlogs is what I call the selfie twirl. So it's going to be a shot that's just sweeping as you're kind of just like taking in an area. It works really well if you've got some interesting things either overhead or below. The way I film it is with a monopod, what I used to call my super sturdy selfie stick. But what makes it different from a regular iPhone selfie stick is it's got these tripod style clamps. So it's super sturdy, it can hold a DSLR, or it works great with like uh, the Canon G7X or GoPro. I'm trying it for the first time right here with my Canon M50. And it's kind of cool because I can see the viewfinder and I like that. Lately, I've become a huge fan of close-up and macro style shots. I think it's great to first get a wider shot of a place and then come in to show some of the smaller details. It'll give your viewers a deeper overall experience along with that nice visual variety so they can actually feel like they're in a place rather than just looking at it from afar. Think about it when you're in a place experiencing something, you're not just looking like this, sometimes you're looking like this. You're looking at small things, like these flowers. There are actual macro lenses on the market which will really amplify the tiny, tiny things, but generally, as long as you have a camera with a large aperture lens and a decent minimal focal distance, then you can get some really nice close-up shots. Now that was shot on my Canon G7X, which is a point-and-shoot camera with an awesome 1.8 aperture lens. The video I made immediately prior to this was about the best settings to use on that camera. I also love shooting close-ups on my Canon M50 with this fixed 50 millimeter one .8 8 lens and I can use it on my M50 thanks to the EF to M mount lens adapter. I will link to all of these things in the description below and on the blog post at amy.tv for your reference if you'd like to check out any of this gear and also feel free to ask me questions about it in the comments below. Now these close-up shots also work really well when paired with slow motion effects. If you do want to shoot slow motion you'll want to shoot at 60 frames per second or an even higher frame rate if your camera allows it. Of course then you'll want to fit that footage into a 24p timeline and slow it down which will give you a nice smooth slow motion 
motion effect without the stutter. I could do a whole video on slow motion, so let me know if you'd like to see that. Of course, not all macro shots need to be in slow motion, and not all slow motion shots need to be macro, but using either one of these interesting styles will add a nice effect and lots of variety to your vlogs. And that's it! If you aren't using all of these different types of shots in your content, I highly suggest you at least experiment with capturing them and see what works out for you. Leave me a comment below and let me know which type of shot is your favorite to see or use in travel vlogs, and also what other types of videos you'd like to see here on AMA TV. I would love to help you out with all of your travel vlogging needs. And if you're not yet a subscriber, of course I would love to have you join us. Hit that notification bell as well. And you can also join the Facebook group I created for travel filmmakers called Travel Film Friends. I will link to that below and also some additional free resources and videos I think you should watch in order to level up your travel vlogging skills. I'm Alicia and I will see you guys next week. Bye!